part of our battle report using bell hooks rules. Um, a battle report that we're going to do in detail so we can see how the mechanics work. So let's see the train first and uh, understand the situation. We have uh, on the left an English force, a small contingent against the largest French force, has been ambushed. Uh, the English need to uh, defend themselves. The French have to attack. So what the train is divided by a river that is an obstacle as per the rules. So anybody entering will be um, disarrayed, that giving negative uh, modifiers in Mali and in other uh, parts of the rule. Uh, there is a hill that's very important that for the English it gives positive modifiers. The English need to control it. It's in the English side of the river. And also we have a um, bridge that has to be guarded uh, because this is the easiest access for the French. Uh, the French are planning to uh, or use uh, foot knights or mounted knights to um, take over the bridge. For the English right flank, there is a cultivated area, let's say some type of uh, terrain that is quite difficult with these type of hedges that can protect, that can give protection. And this is a positive as the English would have their left flanks at least um, more difficult for the French to um, to outflank them. So this is how the terrain is. At the end, uh, the English, there is um, there's some um, uh, woods uh, that are at the left flank of the English. So this is how the terrain is. Uh, I think it's an interesting terrain. Um, it uh, gives a balanced battle because although the French are the largest force, um, they need to cross all these. They need to go to the English. The English probably, as a strategy, will use to defend um, the banks of the river uh, and uh, block uh, the access from the bridge. So let's go and see um, the armies and then we'll talk about the commanders and then we'll talk about um, uh, the army um, points. So the English have on the left flank um, a company of uh, longbowmen. Then they have basically the longbowmen will be used to probably stop the French. They will, they have stakes. They may come here and block the access and try to shoot them uh, and weaken them until they cross. Then beside we have um, a company uh, of uh, French of excuse me English uh, men at arms, and then on the other side we have another company of longbowmen. Probably this longbowmen could be used to take over a high a elevated position and start shooting at the French. Again, uh, a deep formation, a block unit of uh, longbowmen and men at arms that will probably uh, try to control this left flank, uh, of, uh, the left of the, of the hill, the banks of the river. Then um, another company of uh, men at arms and at their extreme flank, another company of crossbow longbowmen. So this is the English formation. The English have three captains. We're going to talk about the one commander in chief and uh, um, uh, two captains, we're going to talk about them um, in uh, a minute. So let's go to the French. So the French, the largest force, have a band of uh, skirmish crossbowmen here. They're probably, because they don't have any problems with difficult terrain, they're probably going to try and outflank here the English and try to create problems. They're going to try to give them some, shoot them and weaken them. Um, they have um, then um, a, a company of uh, French men at arms. Then this strong, huge force uh, of uh, French mounted knights supported by the retainers that they're considered like cavalry. Uh, then we go here and there's a block formation of um, uh, French militia and men at arms. Another um, company of um, foot knights and at the extreme flank, a block formation again of um, men at arms and spearmen, and the extreme flank, another band of crossbowmen. The French commanders are four, um, and let's see one by one. So the period with the period we're fighting the battle is gonna be around the 1380s. Uh, all the commanders I've chosen are from this period. It's a period that is very interesting because it's after the death of the Black Prince, Edward III is becoming quite old and the English are losing all the possessions they've gained during the past, the first part, the Edwardian part of the Hundred Years' War, by this man, Bertrand Guclin. 
the one great commander who doesn't fight the English in pitched battles anymore. He fights other shares and campaigns. So the commander in chief is Bertrand de Guclin for the French, uh, who is a two star leader. Then we have uh, the famous Robert de Tibouville from uh, the movie uh, The Duel, who is commanding also another division of this army. Uh, then um, the Peter the Second Alan Khan, who was part, who was in the movie as well. So it's quite interesting. Uh, he's commanding also, and the third is Robert de Tras, Deras, uh, the commanding. He's commanding basically uh, the deep formation of um, of uh, the block formation of men at arms and spearmen. Uh, Alan Khan is uh, commanding the same, uh, plus uh, another unit of men at arms. This is a two star leader, and. Um, this is uh, the French commanders, all of the same period, all fighting at the same time. So let's go to the English. I will see that we have Robert Knowles as the commander-in-chief and uh, Hugh Cavalry, Cavalry the second, and the third one is here, as you can see, is um, Hugh Zelazuke. So these are the commanders for uh, the French, for the English. And uh, let's talk about some army points, so you know, and you will see here on the screen. So, um, let's go with the English. The English have a commander-in-chief who doesn't get any points. Um, they have two captains for 10 points. Uh, they have um, uh, two veteran longbowmen, uh, so 30 points, and two longbowmen 30, for 24 points. Two men-at-arms, 48 points. Veteran men-at-arms for 30 points. And stakes that would add two units have stakes, so they would add another six points. All uh, longbowmen have stakes, so they would add another uh, twelve points. Excuse me, uh, to the English, and that would be a total uh, the English um, um, points to one fifty four. So the English have one hundred fifty four points. Now, if we go to the French, uh, the French uh, have uh, the commander chief who is free and two captains. 10, the extra captain costs 7, so they have another 7 points. They have spear militia, you can say it's uh, less amount of times for 24 points. They have um, uh, um, foot knights for 44 points, veteran foot knights, 2 for 60 points, uh, 2 skirmish crossbows for 12 points, uh, 1 light horse for 12 points, 1 unit of knights, the block formation here for 24 points altogether, adding to 193 points, so the French have the edge at the point system. So guys, we are the first, the first stage of the maneuver phase and the English are moving coherently to uh, occupy the banks of the river. Uh, they move twice uh, this unit of longbowmen, so it can be in position earlier to block um, the entrance, well, the access uh, of the mounted knights who, will, it was decided, will be the ones who will try to charge uh, through the bridge, over the bridge. Now the French did the same thing, they started moving coherently uh, their center line that will attack the English at the center and they're trying to move their um, their um, crossbowmen in, within the woods to be protected uh, both in the flanks uh, so they will avoid English fire. Now in, the English can shoot now if they want to. <clears throat> they are in the French on the river are in command range. But why we're not doing it well? Why I'm gonna leave for another movement phase? Because when when uh, we shoot and we finish uh, the uh, first phase of maneuvers, then we're gonna start using the cards and maybe the lack of the draw will give uh, a French leader that they're for anyway, uh, the opportunity to move first and maybe cross the river with uh, two actions or if, um, um, with two actions or uh, maybe um, he will get in a better position than the English. Now with this alternative one action free per, per com company uh, it's more controlled. So the English prefer to move their armies at least in a more advantageous position closer to the banks of the river in order uh, when in order to avoid any surprises uh, when the French uh, when the during the car, the car draw if the French get uh, a lucky draw with uh, all the commanders before. So this is the situation now. Uh, the English are here moving what we're going to try and as I said block the banks of the river. Uh, we're going to have one round again of maneuver phase. The English are not going to shoot um, 
the French, obviously, this is a disadvantage. Probably I'm going to use it for the end of the maneuver phase. Uh, but the French here um, decided to attack with a mounted. This is going to be house rules uh, because there's nothing about fighting uh, on. Uh, well, you can follow the main rules and you can modify. It's very easy to make house rules if you understand the philosophy of the game. Uh, so the house rules will be the battle if there is a hand-to-hand -hand combat on the bridge, but also shooting on the bridge obviously will be uh, more vulnerable. The mounted knights will be more vulnerable being on in line, in a, in a type of uh, line formation. The French are moving coherently here with the Peter Gallen com uh, command and Robert Riaras commands moving steadily. So guys, we continue with the maneuver phase. Um, I made some changes uh, because um, change of formation and uh, fighting over the bridges house rules i would consider change information as a special um order that needs two actions so it cannot be done in the maneuver phase so that's why i put back uh, the mounted knights uh, the mounted knights didn't move uh, to go close to the bridge uh, so um this is a situation now where we're gonna have now the english we're gonna do uh, the next move and um uh, let's see what they're going to do. Hope, probably I'm going to uh, support them by uh, the knights. Let's go and see what I'm talking about. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take the mounted knights and move them, uh, we'll do one move, six inches, and move them close to the uh, English uh, longbowmen. What's the reason? The reason is strategic because of the rules. So six inches, they move here, one beside the other. The reason is that um, the French knights uh, being impetuous but at the same time being arrogant they're ignoring if they have if, if it's possible they're ignoring um, the lesser uh, noble lesser troops uh, than them so they are going to the counterparts they're going to the knights they don't consider noble noble to fight peasants as that long woman were or common folk so by having the, the knights beside them at the moment um, this would oblige the mounted knights to attack um, the knights, the English knights, and not attack the longbowmen. So obviously here, we need to check what's going to happen here in, 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 in on the river because the English are going to come afterwards, the French. So this area will be open, but we will discuss this a bit later. So the move for the English is this one with the commander here. And um, I think next one will go to the French, and this will be probably the French trying to move their line in front. So we'll go to the French, and the block formation will try to move another six inches. The English are not going to shoot. They're not going to waste shooting uh, unless it is um, for um, the, the unit that's going to cross the bridge. Um, so the French move the block formation towards the river and this will be the next uh, step will be the English moving again. Let's see how this setup looks. Let's zoom out. Now what I will do with the English is I will probably move the longbowman to get over um, this hill. I think they have the distance is six inches. Um, maybe not. No, they can be. So they will go here approximately. They will start moving towards the hill. I will put them at the edge of the hill and I will put the actual distance, the guys here, the flank, so we know how far they are. So it's most probably the next movement would probably be um, the shooting from uh, the longbowmen. So the longbows are moving towards the hill and uh, most probably they will shoot in the next, well, not the next turn, the turn after. Uh, now the French will probably keep moving their main line and um, um, uh, to start crossing the banks of the river. So the French move the second company, as you can see, towards the river. And I think now the English are going to move again the longbowmen so uh, they can take the elevated position here and then they can shoot. So we're going to move them twice. Um, so it's here the position. We need another six. They cannot shoot now because we said it's the maneuver phase. So the English longbowmen are at the top of the hill and ready to shoot in the next round. Uh, we have some more, one more movement for the French and uh, then probably we'll shoot and uh, then we'll go to the actual battle phase where it's going to be in this in the second part of the game of the video um now the french what they're going to move so the french probably want to move uh, the foot knights the block unit of foot knights on spearmen commanded by robert arras in their left the right flank and keep creating a line of battle supporting uh, the main french line that will attack the english 
So the French line of battle is moving, ready to cross the river and uh, obviously now the English will shoot at them and will start the actual phase, um, the English line. So the English line here is falling behind, the French are taking the advantage because we moved twice the longbowman here to get the elevated position. I don't know if it's a good strategy or not, but I think if the English are lucky with the draw and they can get the cards, um, they will be able to, um, to cover this ground. So what the English will do now is they turn, they will shoot so we can finish the maneuver phase and go to um, the actual battle phase. So they hit with a 4, 5 and a 6, and um, with a 5 and a 6, excuse me, and let's see. So we have a 6 and another 6. Don't forget the English are veteran, they roll, they roll the 1s. We have a 5 and another 5 here. There's no 1s. So the French have have defend 4 possible hits, uh, and uh, they have to defend with the... Uh, uh, plus three, but if the distance between uh, the shooter is below nine, uh, it's a short distance, that means they get a plus one modifier to the defense value, that means they need a plus four. So let's see the distance between this longbowman and this um, uh, French man at arms. So the distance is, if it's below nine, no, it's ten, so they will roll, um, they will roll. Um, a plus three. So let's see here. Don't have to see the box. Let's see the box. So they defend all but one. So only one hit. So only one hit for the French. We remove one base. Um, let's move one base. So one base is removed. And uh, the French, there's nothing. One hit is not important. And now we finish the maneuver phase. We don't have any el anything else. We don't have any tests. So let's do the first turn, let's take a card and see whose action and it is Robert de Arras and he's a one star leader. So Robert de Arras, uh, the extreme flank, uh, will be the leader who will give an order. Let's do it so we can see how it works. So Robert de Arras is commanding this um, unit, a block unit, it to the wind to move here and he moves six inches and that will be exactly here. And that the French already reached the bank of the river the English are still behind. There is a big problem now. This was the issue that the French now can cross, although they have to stop now because this is um, an obstacle and they will get disordered. This is one order, two actions. That's uh, the French reached already the banks of the river and uh, things are not looking very well for the English. They stopped here being, and they become disarrayed because this is an obstacle, the banks of the river. But um, Things are not looking good for the English, and I'll tell you why. And the reason is because the English are far away from the banks of the river, and the French already reached it. So now it's getting a bit dark here. We're going to stop. Let me turn one more card and see what we will have. It's another French commander. It could be a problem for the English. And it's de Guislain, de Guclin, um, who controls the mounted knights. One order is change formation. It takes a full order, two actions. And the other order is to move, and this again is to action, so move uh, twice. So the French already are on the top of the bridge. The English need urgently to shoot them. So the French are across the bridge and the English need to shoot them. Things are not looking good. The French getting two commanders at the beginning. This is what the English were afraid of, two commanders at the beginning of the, of the battle. And let's see the last one. And this is skirmish and artillery. The English don't have skirmishes and artillery. Let's see the next play deck. And this is another French commander, Count of Alain Khan, who now will cross. Uh, this is a disaster for the English. All the French commanders at the beginning, he will cross the river. He will stop actually at the banks because it's um, um, it's an obstacle. Uh, Alan Khan is a two-star leader and uh, he will get disarrayed. Anyway, guys, we have to do the movement of Alessandro. I have to set, check the rules a bit about... Um, let's read the rules about field defenses or obstacles. Uh, of infantry, any cavalry. Okay, let's check. One second. If a unit crosses an, any natural man-made obstacle, such as stream or fence, it receives one disarray token and ends that action no matter how far the unit has moved already. So, what will be? It's, it's a movement, so it's two actions, but the one action ends at the banks of the river. That's what the um, 
Andy says. So the French here would probably move. So one action we can see it up to here, and the second action from here uh, uh, before. But um, I will leave. I will put one action here, and they will become disarrayed. Things are looking very bad for the English. The French are taking all the cards. This is what I was afraid. This is what I told you at the beginning of the battle. And he gets a disarray token. And they can move again, but it's difficult ground, so they will move four. Can they touch, attack? No, they cannot. So they can enter the river here. They need another movement. And the same I should have done here. He stopped. He got, um, he got disarrayed and he's moving difficult ground, so you get another disarray token. So the French are entering here. The French are entering the river and they get the initiative from the English and let's see what's happening. So things, things are looking really, really bad for the English. The French are taking the initiative from the beginning. Uh, four cards. All three, three of the four French commanders have been already uh, released. And uh, the English are behind. The, the, the French are crossing the river. The French are crossing the river from the center with the Alençon and the Daras. Uh, they are, the English are falling behind. Look at the English, where are they? They are still behind. They will shoot, obviously, but they're still behind. And the French are crossing the river now. So uh, things are looking bad, very, very, very bad for the English. Anyway, guys, this is for me. Tomorrow I'm going to shoot the second one. We're going to have more fun. Uh, this is uh, still the first round of the maneuver phase, of the battle phase. So we still have a lot of cards, a lot of things that can happen. The English can shoot and create problems with the French. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.